And the devil then did what? Took him up into a high mountain and showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered to me, and to whomsoever I will, I was. All the kingdoms of the world. Who wouldn't sell his soul today, the average person, for all the kings of the world? Most people sell it for a little section of a community. That's right. Don't they that? Or if I could just be the mayor. Man, if I could be the mayor. Or if I could come from a little hip town down in southern Ohio and get to be the great governor of the state of Ohio, I'd just sell my soul to anybody in Cleveland, any other place. And if I could be the president of the United States, oh, what wouldn't I do? Jesus had the opportunity, bigger than anybody. He said, all the kingdoms of the world and all the glory of them, I'll give to you. Why didn't he buy it? Well, verse 8 gives you the answer. Well, verse 7 was the, was the, the big push on it. If you'll do what? Worship me. That was it. Then all will be done. Verse 8, Jesus answered and said to him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written again. It is what? Written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only. Not glory, not power, not prestige, not position in a community. Not whether they speak ill or well of us. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou us serve. That's the way it goes. It is what? Written. I don't give a hoot what you think, or your opinions, or your arguments. I want to know, is it written? That I can read it line by line, and word by word, and can I understand it? That's the way core. It is written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou worship. Nothing to come ahead of the worshiping of the true God. That's why there is a discipline involved in the core. Tremendous discipline. Verse 9. And Satan again, and he brought him to Jerusalem, the great center of all religious movements. And he set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, you just cast yourself down from him. For it is written, and here the devil's quoting scripture, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. Now don't tell me the devil doesn't know the Bible. He knows more scriptures than the average Christian ever gets around to thinking it because we never have a recovery program. As a Christian, we have a forgetful program. No retemory, no retaining in the mind of the greatness of God's Word. The old devil knows Scripture, and he puts it in Johnny Jump Up's brain cells. Johnny Jump Up comes back with a little bit of Scripture from this place and from that place, and lo and behold, before you know it, they're not worshiping the true God. They're worshiping a false God, but they think it's the true God. But thinking doesn't make it so. You label the canned pickles on the outside, you've got peaches on the inside. It doesn't change the fruit on the inside. The label doesn't, right? That's your life, that's right. <laughs> well, look at verse 10. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou even dash thy little old foot, not your head, just your feet. Relatively insignificant lest at any time you dash your foot against the stone. Straight scripture. Huh. Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. How do you like that? That one? That's the way it's called. Thou shalt not what? Tempt the Lord thy God. That's the way it's called. Could we sell our souls and have the power, the glory, the prestige. Oh, yeah. Could have done that a thousand times. But that's not what we sell our soul for. We dedicate ourselves 
that we can so give out God's word to God's people that we need not tempt the Lord our God by flipping. Well, finally, in verse 13, it says, the devil had ended all the temptation he could pour on him. What did he do? He departed for him, from him for the rest of his life. No, for a what? Little seed. The next time he had a good opportunity, he was right back bugging him again. And all through the word. Time and time again, Jesus always reciprocated with the word. It is written, thus saith the Lord. Then there are two ways to handle the word of God. Satan handles it one way in here. Jesus handled it another. Now one or the other had to be wrong, right? You gotta make up your mind. Just because a man quotes the scripture, just because a man would carry the book under his arm, or if he held it up here and he said, this is what the word says, does it mean it says it at all? It could say it as the devil said it said it, but it could be taken out of its context and could not be rightly divided, right? So just because you meet a scripture quoting preacher doesn't mean he knows a hill of beans and a hail storm about the accuracy of God's word. That's right. And just because a man carries a book, or just because I lay it open before him, just because I would read a section from the Gospel of Luke, doesn't mean that I know at all what the word really says. There are a lot of different tests you have to put to it. And this, of course, you all know from the foundational classes, how you have to test whether that word is rightly divided or whether it isn't. Whether it's just a bunch of baloney and hogwash we're handing out or whether it's the greatness of God's wonderful matchless word. The devil quoted it. Jesus quoted it. One or the other had to be wrong. Well, I'll bet the devil was. You know where he was quoting from? He got a center reference. Nope, Deuteronomy. <laughs> reason I know it so I looked it up. Oh, Deuteronomy 8, yeah. Psalms came a little later. Quote it again here. Well, look at Deuteronomy 8. Out of this came this great truth. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And I said, this is basically the core. Now, to go back to its original usage gives you the picture out of which it, that great truth was born. He says in chapter 8, verse 1, All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply talking to the children of Israel, that you may live and do what? Multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers. Just walk in and take it. He's already given it to you. He said, go in and possess it. Okay. And thou shalt remember, verse 2, all the way, he mentions the way, thou shalt remember all the way. I didn't see that before. It had to be in here. Thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness when they left Egypt. To humble thee, to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldst keep his commandments or whether you wouldn't, or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with what? Manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee to know, thee know, that man doth not what? Live by bread alone, but by every word which proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man what? Live. That's what Jesus was quoting. The day he spoke to the devil, we read about in Luke, and by the way, it's in the fourth chapter of Matthew too. Verse 4. Thy raiment wax not old upon thee. I'm, in Deut I'm still in Deuteronomy 8. Thy raiment wax not old upon thee. Neither did thy foot swell these 40 years, and they didn't even have foot powder. <laughs> right. They had no swelling of the feet, and they walked. 
Well, sometimes they sat a lot, and they didn't have swelling there either. So it was just a matter of uh, somebody was doing something for somebody. Must have been the God, huh? 